Okay, so I want to move on to I swear you have more experience in this, I imagine, because you continuously work on it, but you're going to have something to say here, I imagine, too. Is So where are we using, like, what kind of state management techniques are we using in view storefront, and, like, what are we... Like, what are we using within state management? What are we using within, like, local locally stored within components? Mm. Like, what's the situation there? Uh, so, in view storefront, uh, we have created many states. Uh, like, uh, we have state for uh, uh, product catalog and uh, user. There are many states. And okay. over those states, we have written uh, some mutations. Okay. Uh, and mutations are uh, a very basic uh, functions without logic to mutate the state. Uh, correct me if I am wrong, wrong somewhere and uh, uh, that mutations are called by actions yeah. uh, and actions are be, uh, functions with logic they just uh, their job is just to call uh, through logic and they call the mutation to perform any actions on state and this uh, action mutation and state uh, relation is very useful when we are debugging anything like uh, there is any change in a state so we can just uh, from uh, the uh, browser extension tools we can just uh, uh, rever go back in time uh, uh, undo some mutations and check which functions and which things have uh, changed the state also uh, after that we have a getter getters uh, uh, view storefront has a very good vuex convention doc uh, block for this and uh, uh, getters is something which just get you the value of that specific thing like uh, getters mostly start with is or get uh, is user logged in or get something uh, uh, what you want to fetch so this, this is what happening in view storefront using vuex uh, yes exactly okay I, I while working on view storefront i do uh, get a chance to go through those documents and those are really good right. for for the people who are just starting things off uh, in any of the state management libraries, they they have defined what kind of modules you have to create. Uh, uh, you have to create. You should create. Right. What should be the naming, naming conventions? conventions. And, and that's that's a really good documentation out available out there. So as you started working in this, you started from view storefront, and then you also carried that knowledge with you, I presume, to the work you did in Ionic and Angular. So what kind of information did you find very helpful from view storefront that you? took with you in, in your work in Ionic, what, can you like just uh, 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 expand uh, upon that? While working on that, I was really fascinated by the the way things have been modeled out there. And uh, we def definitely were inspired in our mobile application when implementing the state management. Like uh, uh, when, when, I, when we worked on client telling, uh, the, the way it was modeled out there, uh, the products, authentication, uh, the categories uh, we try to replicate si uh, the similar behavior out here because uh, uh, we do found that uh, a really good scalable approach out there mm -hmm. so like uh, the product having the current product as mm -hmm. well as the list uh, and the query that is being done uh, though we do modified it like uh, uh, when I talk about the client telling app uh, uh, just one second, I want to interrupt. Uh, client telling, for anybody who doesn't know, is this application that we developed that's meant to be used in stores by employees to shop for customers with customers. So within that, there's like basic, it's basically an e-commerce app, but you're shopping for someone else. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, right. So, uh, okay, in that application, uh, uh, we, uh, we had the uh, list of products available out there. We have to deal with the shopping cart out there, mm. uh, the categories, and uh, the authenticated user, the stores, Right. that he is associated with so here wha what we tried to do was uh, uh, basically uh, we we need to model it such that in future we are able to uh, make it a more uh, offline usage application also so uh, we used ng access uh, in combination with the ionic cache library Okay. And uh, the uh, okay, what Ionic Cache Library is? Uh, if you want to cache uh, API requests, so uh, this is really a good library for uh, for the Ionic applications available out there. So what we did is uh, at the level of uh, uh, the state management, hmm. uh, the products are a product list and the current product is stored in the state management and 
uh, when, when navigating from the list page to the detail page if the uh, data is available in the uh, list itself uh, from there itself it is extracted and other than that uh, we uh, used the any cache library so uh, okay in view storefront uh, we have the uh, logic to uh, to store the current query as well and uh, based upon that it does the uh, uh, api request to server and gets it so we tried to modify it slightly in our client telling application what we did is instead of uh, having that logic in the uh, state management what we did is we used the ionic cache so what ionic cache does is uh, when we are making uh, uh, the same api uh, same query mm -hmm. it gets us from the cache itself and uh, so in uh, by doing that what happens is we we don't have to store the current query with that so uh, if like the filters are changed or we we are just storing the list mm -hmm. and the current detail page okay so based upon that uh, we are uh, getting the results out there so so what advantage do we get by storing the query in our ionic cache like what what is that uh, the advantage is uh, that uh, for example uh, right now i am uh, looking at the uh, complete list of products yeah and uh, i did some filters uh, like uh, i went to some uh, particular uh, category of mm -hmm. products like, uh, like let's say for example we selected men men's okay so uh, we need to make a api call out there to the server and right. get it now uh, if I store this query out here, I need to manage uh, the complete caching of the complete list as well as the new query. Mm -hmm. And okay. once the query changes to again the complete list, then uh, I have to get that list and I, I, I need to manage the pagination also. Okay. So if I am doing that using the INIC cache, what is happening? The INIC cache library is taking care of. Like if I send the same query, it will result uh, it will return me the result ba based upon that query if it is okay. already there so oh. i don't have to write my custom logic right mm. so basically the advantage we have of saving a query is for, for example that we used here men's so like the first time you select men's when you launch the app it goes to the server brings back a list of men's products yeah right and you go back and you just like deselect everything then say for the next user, next customer that walks in, we select men's again. It doesn't, Ionic Cache smartly decides, hey, I already have this query saved up. I don't need to go to the server. I can just load it up uh, locally, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. That way only. And uh, the idea was he here was that Ionic Cache takes care of it. We don't uh, have to write any. Otherwise, we would have to write the write logic the of, hey, if you find the query, if you can't find it, then go online and yeah, look for right. it. So, so it's smart experience, smart caching experience for developer and user both. Right. And other than that, uh, for the authentication part, uh, uh, there are plugins available with the ng-access library uh, for the storage. And uh, so we use that and that plugin automatically takes care of uh, getting data from the storage and uh, updating the memory once the user resumes the application. Uh, I did plan to use the same for the product, but there again we need to take care of uh, uh, change in the query. So to just uh, skip that part of customization, I used the any cache. Great. So apart from that, you also did some uh, state management around the shopping cart too, right? Yeah. Uh, so what is that? Can you expand upon that too? Uh, yeah, we uh, okay in client telling uh, we did have a really complex shopping cart from the initial and it, it has been refactored like uh, initially the cart was uh, having uh, initially we used to have multiple carts uh, uh, in, in the client telling app when uh, multiple users come along and uh, uh, the sales representative dealing with them. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, lay out the business scenario for you real quick so that you can get to the <laughs> side that you want to. Basically what it was is clienteling allowed the uh, sales rep to tend to multiple customers at one time so they could be talking to three different customers and manage their shopping experiences simultaneously. Well, for that we needed the multiple carts but then we decided that um, this was kind of an overcomplication and it was very rare that one sales rep is talking to like <laughs> three different people at the same time and they're all checking out at the same time. Like, 
it's cool down a bit. They're going to be talking to one person at a time, so we would do, we cut that down to one shopping cart for at a time. Yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, when uh, we have this single shopping cart available out there, and we use it with the state management application from different pl- places, like mm. the cart is mutated. Mm. It, it's quite uh, easy for us to uh, have that change being uh, uh, migrate uh, propagated to different components like sh- uh, a, a, ca- a cart can be changed from the shopping cart component as well as from the product component right. and here in client telling app we have a really diverse scenario available like uh, a customer can buy from the uh, same store available mm. it, it can order uh, it as a delivery order it can buy from some other store it can buy later so uh, the uh, the application is having a really uh, complex business scenario mm-hmm. so when we migrated the code from uh, the current code that was with the shared services it became much more simpler and much readable we have okay. a central point av- available earlier the things were more uh, in a functional approach but uh the uh, the the logic was uh really complicated for mm. the n- uh, new developer to understand right. but now uh, the things are more of clear mm. uh with the state management in place and the uh, the clarity for the new developer and the readability is definitely in inter- uh, improved for cool and so you also mentioned that we did some we you made a lot of these changes in the in the name of making a more offline ready application so how did these things change the way the application performed offline uh okay so now uh, when we have a state management in place it gives us more control over our right. application so i- initially the idea was to uh, simplify the flow of the application like uh, we can have uh, the changes done to the shopping cart like like what i have seen in uh view store front mm-hmm. there there is a task queue available out there right. and the ch- changes are being moved to the server mm-hmm. when the application resumes out there right. so now he- here we have that control in the uh, the store that we have created the the actions we have created from where we can uh, define such queues when the user is in in off uh, in the mm-hmm. offline mode and uh, uh, to and it makes it more easier for us to achieve that so a big part of it what i'm understanding is a lot of this information that we're talking about storing in one place would still be possible to like that still serves an offline first approach but this idea of queuing up tasks is the part that really is the offline first approach is that what you're saying uh so what i'm trying to say is uh, that it can be achieved uh, without an estate management application in right. place hmm. but uh, when we uh, move towards the state management application it makes it part uh, more easy more easier and more clear hmm. uh, in in terms of uh, uh, making a making a design out of it okay uh, we can uh, get those points uh, touch points where we can make those changes and uh, make it a really efficient application right uh, i've really seen that uh, uh, while dealing with state management the state management uh, in state management we define how a data will be structured and uh, this whole management uh, around the state makes it very easy for a developer to uh, make it uh, more o- offline appropriate or uh, now the whole data is more manageable for the developer so he can manage it accordingly uh, whatever he wants mm. and the scenario makes it most most uh, more easier uh, for developer than the user yeah you also mentioned stuff about like how i guess this also connects back to the debugging stuff you were talking about yes. where like because it's all in one place you can easily track what's uh, if there's any issues what those issues right. are right so <coughs> uh this state management uh, all different state management comes with a browser tool uh, so uh, in an enterprise uh, grade uh, uh, application where multiple users are uh, using the same uh, database uh, same state uh, there are uh, n number of scenario where state are uh, being changed so this uh, in vuex this mut- uh, mutation gives us a very uh, good functionality to 
uh, check which uh, function or how that data is manipulated and we can also go back to some mutation and some uh, state uh, and see how that uh, fun uh, that function has manipulated us uh, specific data because here we have a single source of truth and we can watch that mm -hmm. so it's easy to, easier to debug right cool so um that's pretty much all I wanted to, all I had on my mind about uh, state management. Of course, if you guys have anything else, anything maybe about model view controller, I don't know, maybe, who knows. <laughs> um, there is a pretty big conspiracy out there that Mark Zuckerberg actually hates model view controller, and that's why he put out Flux Pattern, and it's actually just a big, like, um, mind game, Illuminati stuff. It's crazy, <laughs> man. All right. Uh, if you guys, if how about this? Uh, before we wrap up, if you ha if, if you could give one takeaway to everybody who's starting with state management, what is your one takeaway? Um, okay, my takeaway would be uh, that it's really good to have, hmm. but it comes with its own pros and cons. Right. So uh, first, think if it is needed for your application, mm -hmm. then only go for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a it's a really great world uh, when you, when you have it in place. So basically, watch this episode if you want to implement state management because we tell you if you need it or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that that's done now? All right, <laughs> bye. <laughs>